This is where it happened at. Now I'm going to show you a photograph that we believe that Elvis took. And if you look in the photograph, I'm going to try to get over here in the shade so you can see it. If you look in the photograph, that's June on the back of a Ford. You see that awning right there and that little A-frame thing? I want you to look right here. There's the awning that is in the photograph. Right there. And there's the A-frame of that house. So it was right next door to this house. Then there's another photograph that looks like she's on the car right here. Let's look at it. It looks like they're on this side of the street. So that house right there would have been on this side of the street, but I think it's gone now. So where these bushes are right here, let's walk down here and look. You can see there's a garage here. Now, I believe that house was would be right there or right here, or it could be, you know what? It may be that house right there. It just makes it look closer. No, nope, that one's different. That's not it. So I'm gonna back up and look at this house over here. But that, you see where there could have been a house right there. And I believe that that is that house. In fact, that garage right there, aha, uh -huh, that little building is that building you see with that tin roof on it that I was just standing in front of. You could see that in the photograph right there. So that house is gone. There was a house in between these two houses. That structure right there is that structure you see right there. So this is definitely definitely not maybe this is the spot and just as an aside that car that you see right there with june and this car are this car that is in the museum at graceland i bet you've seen it is when he was sitting if you headed south there's only one way to turn and that would be to the right until you went up and made that curb but if you go to the left, then there's a choice of a left or a right. Right, but I'm saying when he dropped you off in front of the house mm -hmm. and he beeped and waved to you out the window, was he going uh -huh. towards the sound or towards the ocean? I don't have any idea. You don't remember? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, I do not. Well, that's okay. We're, we're just, uh, we like details, so. It's been a hell of a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, June, I, uh, I'm Trey Miller, by the way. I, I'm here helping Billy. Um, uh -huh. I've really enjoyed your book, though. Well, thank you very much. I really do, and you, I mean, your story is, I mean, very detailed, and it's great, and that's why well, we're trying. thank you. I and really we're using that book as our guideline for everything that we're filming. That's how we're finding these things and telling these stories. Uh-huh. Okay, so while Elvis was here, he attempted to go to a different place to stay to keep from being mobbed, which was Porter Avenue. So we're going to start over to Porter. We do not have a street number, but we have a what I think is a photograph. And you can see it's relatively close to June's house. And we're going to go from there. Where's he buried? Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Okay, so he's close. We're going to do that when we go back over yonder. So she's still sharp. Oh, yes, very. But she's still not giving in and going, oh, well, let me, you know, I offered to her to get her in the house because I thought maybe she'd like to see in it again. But she confirmed that that's mama's bedroom. So she confirmed some stuff for us. And she said on Porter, it was between a street and the curve. She sounds like she did when she was uh, writing a book. Yeah. So, that was a hell of a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she's probably a fun lady. Mm-hmm. She reminds me a lot of a, a, a lady that I knew named Joyce. Looks like Joyce, even. 
sounds like Joyce. It's, it's really kind of uncanny. We gotta get some fuel. <clears throat> eight tenths of a mile doesn't seem like far, but it's a long ways when you have to stop every two yeah. seconds. That was a great spine there, though. Well, you know what I didn't do while I was there? I didn't set my GPS coordinates. Let's see. I gotta go back and set the co coordinates. I hope that girl calls us. And if the girl would call us and let us just come back and film. But we already got, we filmed. That's that's done. Inside. Yeah, I but I would way. love to go inside and see the whole nine yards. I do too. And um, we'll stop back by. And man, if we could get June to come. All right, we gotta get June to come. Do you know where she lives at? I do not. Is it, I mean, it's in Biloxi? Yeah, yeah, she lives around here, no doubt. She said she hadn't been over in that area in a, while. In a long time. Well, maybe we So can... I think she's saying it's not a good area. <laughs> so this is Porter, and this is not Wagner. <laughs> <clears throat> You're not supposed to laugh at the jokes. Let them laugh. Hey, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm watching this as, like y'all are watching this, too. I'm just doing it in live. <clears throat> well, not Memorex. Yeah, Memorex, that's it. No, live, not Memorex. You don't remember the commercials? You no, probably I don't, don't man. You're, you're a youngin. Good Lord. All right, so we're going to spend some time. She said it was between uh, something and the curve. Here's the curve. There's Balboa, and it wasn't Balboa in the curve. So, I have a photograph. Is this still Porter over here? Well, the street signs are messed up over here. DeSoto. We're still on Porter. Yeah, this is still Porter. But she mentioned the curve. It's that house right there. No. <laughs> I mean, he could afford that at some point. She said LaSalle and the curve, I believe. And that last street was LaSalle. And there's naturally a car coming. My Lord. If you're ever filming, there's cars that just come out of the blue. Just let them come around. Come around. They're about to come around, idiot. Go. You can't figure out how to go? Seriously. What in the world? So she said LaSalle and the, I believe she said LaSalle. Okay. Okay, so let me stop. Yeah, you need to look at the picture. And look at the photograph. There's the curve up there. Mm -hmm. All right, stay tuned. And look, I understand. We're asking her to, to recall things that happened. That's why I wish she was with us. Yeah. It would help. Well. I'm I'm not gonna force it. Push the the thing. So friends, this is Porter Avenue, and at some point, June said, you know, we need a place for Elvis to stay that people won't overrun him. He was staying at the Sun and Sands Motel down the beach, and the fans were just all in the parking lot, riding on his car putting their uh, phone numbers on his car and stuff. So yeah, they was, were writing their phone numbers all over his he car. He was very frustrated one evening. So they came up with, uh, it was Bellman that had a rental house, right? Mr. Bellman. And they yes. came up with a house, and it looked very similar to this one. I don't think it is that one, but it looked very similar, and it was definitely on this street. But June cannot recall the number of the house, and we couldn't find any information about it. But I'll show you the photo that I have of it. The problem with the photo in that house is the uh, the porch is different. The mailbox is on the other side. The outside light is on the other side. Other than that, it matches. But we don't find a house on this street. We've been from one end to the other that matches. 
But anyway, they stayed there for a short period of time and were mobbed here as well. So then he went on to uh, the ranch that we're going to show you, which is uh, was kind of a, a hotel and a ranch all together. So friends, this is Robertson and Porter Avenue right here. You can see the train tracks here. The ocean is down there. That's 90. Mr. Bellman had a rental house that was fully furnished that was on this corner right here. And that's where they left the sun and sand and stried, tried to stay in this house. But people mobbed them here too. Unfortunately, the house is gone. But they were mobbed right here. And so from here is where they went out to Gulf Hills. But this is where the house was on this corner. And I got that information from Pat. She remembered exactly where it was. Elvis and June went to Gus Stevens' restaurant, and I'm going to show you where it was. It is unfortunately no longer here. I'm at the corner of 90 and Veterans Avenue, and the restaurant would have been over here in this area, and it would have gone that way. I believe that that sign where it would have been is where this curve is at. Back then, it was just a two-lane road going that way. And which is a two lane down there, but you can see it's got these curves on both sides. But I believe that sign that you know, I'll show you the photo again would have been about over there where that post is at, somewhere out in there. But this is where they stopped and had coats. And then they went that way and went down to uh, in front of the White House Hotel and then walked out on the pier. So we're gonna go down there and I'll show you in this segment or these segments, we're gonna flip from night to day and day to night so you can kind of get a feel for what it was really like. The Sun and Sands Hotel Elvis was staying in was right down there on this side. So something we thought is funny, you see these signs here, but you also see these empty signs. Some, somebody came here and put their signs up and took other people's signs down and threw them over here. And look, that's just wrong. I understand running for office, but if this is gonna make you win, then you probably don't need to win. Lori, I've decided I love Biloxi. This is a great town. Look at the ocean out there. Just beautiful. And I hate to tell you this, we're going to have to move here. I've decided to run for office, Public Service Commissioner, Southern District. And I've changed my name to Sugar Stylings. So from now on, you got to call me Sugar. So friends, I'm standing in front of the White House Hotel. It says, established as the White House Inn in 1895, this hotel was first opened as a boarding house by Coral White. By 1910, the White House had grown in popularity and became a tourist dest destination. The campus encompassed six residential buildings connected by a grand colonnade of Corinthian columns and accommodated 150 guests. A survivor of both Hurricane Camille and Hurricane Katrina, the White House Hotel is listed in the National Register of Historical Places and designated a Mississippi landmark in 2010. Believe it or not, there's Elvis history right here, but it's something different than you would think that it would be. The night that Elvis and June dated the very first time, they were driving and laughing, and they laughed so hard that he pulled over, and he just happened to pull over in front of the White House Hotel. And when he pulled over in front of the hotel, they went across to the pier that was over here and walked out on the pier. So there's the White House Hotel. And I know it's a little breezy, but that's the way it is at the beach. But there's pieces of a pier right here. A lot of these piers got damaged in those two hurricanes and are gone now unfortunately but it was a really big long pier and we know that it was along in here we just don't know where So I'm gonna let Trey tell you the story. 
So right here on this beach in front of the White House Motel in Biloxi, a great Elvis story happened. The first night that Elvis met June Monico, Elvis asked June if he, uh, she would show him around the town. So June and Elvis drove around that evening after his show, and they stopped at a um, diner, I believe, and drank some Cokes, a little uh, air, a place that had some live music, and things like that. You know, of course, they both were underage. So they couldn't really do anything. But anyhow, they stop at the White House Motel because, of course, June didn't want the night to end. And they go out and sit on the beach right here where you are looking at, somewhere in this area. And they spend a few hours out here. And this is where June Juanico, in her book, which I highly recommend if you're an Elvis fan, this is where she said she fell in love with Elvis Presley, right here on this beach and right in front of us over to the right a little bit was the White House Pier. Unfortunately it was destroyed in that hurricane in the 1960s that pretty much just demolished Biloxi. But the pier was right over here in this area. I'm sure the spa guy will show you an aerial of, of the place. But they walked out on this pier that evening and I believe that Elvis and June had their first kiss on that pier. So this was where Elvis and June and Nico first fell in love in Biloxi. And you need to read the story because, you know, Elvis was a jokester and he said some funny things. I think he said something while sitting on this beach like, June, look up at the moon and let's spoon. I don't know what Elvis was meaning by that, but uh, yeah, so, you know, there's some funny things that happened right here on this beach. But yeah, it happened here. Luxie, Mississippi, across the street from the White House Hotel, which is still there. And uh, Elvis and June when Nico was here. Thanks for watching this episode. Hey, if you're in Biloxi, be sure to go to the White House Motel, go across the street, and walk on the beach, because you know Elvis was there once upon a time in his life. So, friends, one last thing. Out here on this beach, right here, in front of the White House Hotel is where Elvis told June that he first fell in love with her. That happened right here. Love is a many splendored thing. Oh, it's a splendored thing, isn't it? Yep. So friends, the Sun and Sands Motel is where uh, Elvis, he stayed. This is where they stayed. We believe that the arch, I'll show you a, a photograph of the arch. It's actually on a postcard. There was an arch that went across the street and they had sun and sands on this side, on the ocean side, and then they had a sun and sands on that side. Somebody told us that where the Waffle House is, there used to be a Margaritaville right here across the street. And the pink Cadillac that we see in the arch picture is where the Margaritaville uh, building would have been. So that made us think that the arch was going to be somewhere right along in here. We really can't find, there's nothing left, unfortunately, of the hotel or even of the arch or anything like that. But Elvis spent a lot of time here uh, at this hotel and they would go across and they would talk about going across to Coco's, K-O-K-O, -O, restaurant and eat. And Elvis had a run in with a waitress at this particular restaurant but he loved to go there. The waitress wasn't too uh, impressed by Elvis. And when he asked for the eggs to be a certain way, he liked his eggs fried hard and he liked his eggs or his bacon burned. And he sent it back multiple times. The third time he just poured the eggs in the floor and got up and walked out and told, um, who was the guy that was with him? Arthur. Yeah, I told Arthur Hooten to give, to pay him a tip a good tip and he just left because she would not make his eggs like he wanted it and you know let me tell you something give the man his eggs like he wants them and one more thing the reason Arthur Hooten was carrying the money is Elvis said that he couldn't be bothered with little things like having to reach in his pockets to get money for people he let the the minor details other people handled the minor details and he handled the singing that's how it was, friends. So friends, this is Gulf Hills. It says has ties to both the notorious and the famous. Present day Gulf Hills Hotel, 
Originally opened in 1927 as the Gulf Hills Dude Ranch and Country Club, complete with horses and an 18-hole championship golf, golf course, the project was owned and developed by Branger Brothers of Chicago, purportedly the laun with laundered mob money as a hangout for Al Capone. The railroad ran north and south between Chicago and Ocean Springs, thereby giving the kingpin mobster direct access to the Gulf of Mexico. Rum running and gambling were big business and helped the Mississippi Gulf Coast earn its nickname as the Dixie Mafia Capital. Many famous entertainers, celebrities, and dignitaries were frequent guests at Gulf Hills. Elvis Presley was one of the most frequent and well-known. He and his entire entourage would stay summers during the years, and it says 51 to 57. We know that's not accurate. I'd say 56 to 57, using Gulf Hills as a central point for their travels. People still stop by and reminisce about their special encounters with the king of American music. And it says this marker is part of Jackson County's 200th anniversary celebration. School students may add this site to their passport with a pencil rubbing of the picture above. Additional information on Jackson County's history and 200th anniversary events may be found online. Jackson County 200. This is it right here. Still standing, still looks original. There's the golf course right there and we're gonna look for other buildings. We found some photographs and some things that we feel pretty confident happened around here. So we're gonna dig in and see what we can find. Still here. Ocean Springs, right next to Biloxi. Across the uh, bay from Biloxi. Established in 1927. So, where were they talking about going out on the veranda? So, Elvis and Gladys and Vernon. They would come eat here. There was a restaurant here, and there was also a pony lounge. Now this thing's changed a lot over the years. I was hoping I could figure out how to light this up, but I don't, I don't see one switch. So we really don't know. Friends, unfortunately they had a fire, and they had some other things that happened. And she mentioned that you can see, like from the outside, you can see some windows, but you can't see them from the inside. Like in a storage area. But this is the veranda area. The swimming pool is no doubt original, this area. And they sat, there's film, there's pictures of them sitting out here. You can see where the pier would be over there. Here it is. Check this out and see if the tile is still the same on the ground. So that's them sitting out here around the pool. And you see, it looks like terracotta type stuff. Let's see if we see any of that. I don't see any of it. But all this stuff has changed. You can see that there's nothing like it was before. I'll show you some before pictures. And if you look, you can see the concrete. Now that stuff may be the same, but the rest of it has completely changed. Nothing like it was. The pool is the same. This has been turned into storage. In fact, you can see there's walls. Most of those windows that you see out there are walled over.
and a slip ray. Slip ray. So friends, you look right here. This is the way the pool did look. The building's burned since then. But on the right hand side, if you look right up in there, you'll see that there's four pieces of glass side to side. And notice that where, let me click on this. Notice that where the edge is, you see there's a, a it looks like a, a tunnel or a cover far back. And notice that the flower bed right in this area, I'm gonna try to point right in that area, is wide and then it gets thin right up against the building. So the arch would have been right there. This is where that glass would have been. The swimming pool is right there. We believe, and, and Trey figured this out, I think he may be right. We believe that these photographs happen right here. So if you look right there, you see that angle where it gets almost to, it actually angles to the building. And also notice the siding. You see how it's thin cut. Uh, it looks like maybe two inch wide pieces covering wide pieces, like covering the, gra the gaps. And then you see behind him, you see glass. So if you look back at this picture right here, again, we believe that it is th those, that glass you see, the four down the side right there, and where it goes wide to thin, we believe he's standing right there and there's bushes behind him. And he's basically like, it would have gone at kind of this angle. So right up against the building, he would have been standing somewhere right about here. And you can imagine the glass right there, the swimming pool over there. All of this has changed drastically. That was not there. None of this stuff looked like this. And let's see if we can see do you see a step in there? You can see steps down the side. Right there with steps. Yeah, and you see, I mean, you see where the, where right here where the arch is, the pavement goes kind of around. I mean, it's changed an awful lot, but we feel pretty confident that it happened right here. And this would have been uh, part of the entrance, I believe, back then. That's what that arch was, where you could come in and out from this side. And where they were staying when they weren't, were not here was right down that street. So this would have been directly out to the pier and things like that. So we're not 100% sure, but I tell you, it sure seems that way. And let me show you one more thing. You see how we were talking about the siding with the thin pieces? Now look at this photograph. And look at the siding on the front of it. You see the thin pieces and the wide pieces all the way around. I could sure make a good case, and, Kay, and Trey could too, that it happened right here. So friends, we figured out that that counter was not here back then. This was the, actually the dining room area. So this is where Vernon and Gladys would have eaten at in this part of the, of the place. And the side door that's around where the arch is, is where the check-in desk. So they would have checked in on the end of the building down there and gone in. This would have been the dining area changed a bunch. It's a cold place. Thank you. Imagine the party is happening here. Yeah. yeah so we're okay. So she's talking about that building over there. Mm -hmm. Well, when we came around that corner, there was another street that I think we were yeah. supposed to turn up. Yeah, so let's go to the back and see if we can do those picture lineups real quick, and then we'll go there. I'm just getting some beauty shots. See, I mean, if we can find those. Yeah, see, shots, that right there should be easy to spot. Oh, yeah. And also those bricks should be easy to spot. See, and I saw the panel on these things last time, and it looked like the same. Yeah, it looks it. just like and that. So June said in her book that they would watch the sunset from the pier for the hotel. Here's the hotel, it hadn't moved, it's still there. You could see that there's a racquetball club and a tennis club here. So we're gonna walk out to the bay out here where they would ski, where they would water ski and see what we can see. See if there's still a pier out here. 